Hello and welcome back to The Homestead. My name is Annie. Today is going to be a video about my top 10 flowers that I grow on The Homestead and why. This is uh, not like in order, so I just wrote them down as they came in, as they popped in my head. <clears throat> so if you've been following me for a while, you know that for an herb, a flower, or an animal, or a vegetable, fruit, whatever, it has to have a purpose. Beauty, practical, like being practical, companionship, uh, to help me out to create a biodiversity, pollinators, whatever. So you have to have a reason to be here. Space is precious. So this is based on my last seven-ish years of experience that I have here and some, some of the research I've done online. Before I get into that, I want to share something super fun uh, that me and Lynn from Bucket List Homestead are doing. Uh, we came together to create a collab. We're gonna call it March Molas Madness. It's gonna start March 3rd, and we're gonna release two recipes every week, and one of their ingredients is gonna be molas. So stay tuned for that. If you have not subscribed, you can hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that little bell. It's gonna tell you when uh, a new, you're gonna get a notification when a new video comes out. So March molas madness, it's m -m -m -m. <laughs> So we're gonna do about 10 recipes, so stay tuned for that. There is also going to be a live on my channel and on Lynn's channel to give more information. So I'm gonna start with zinnia. Zinnia, there's so many colors, so many different types of zinnias. They're beautiful. They go from purple, pinks, uh, yellow, orange. Uh, there's so much white. Uh, one of my favorite is the Queen Lime series. They're just beautiful. Uh, they're cut flowers. So the more you cut them, the more that they grow, they, they are ongoing blooming. So that means they're gonna attract pollinators throughout the entire season. The more you cut them, the more you'll have them. Uh, so they will also attract pollinators and butterfly. <clears throat> so zinnia is an annual. Nasturtium is also an annual, same thing. Uh, it's a variety of colors. There's a lot of different, uh, different colors. There's peach, there's strawberry, there's all different types of colors. Uh, they are known to repel cucumber beetles, white flies, squash bugs, aphids. So I really use this one as a companion plant, but bonus, uh, the beauty, it's edible. The leaves, the green leaves are edible. You can make pesto and the flower is also edible. You can do um, jam, uh, no, sorry, jellies, and you can incorporate them in your um, salads. It's very fragrant. It's super easy also to collect the seeds. So if you found a variety that you really enjoy, you'll be able to collect your own seeds. Number three, chamomile. Chamomile is one of my favorite flowers to grow in the garden. It attracts so many pollinators, but it also attracts aphids. So it's kind of a sacrificial plant because aphids, I rather them on my chamomile plant than on my tomatoes or peppers or whatever. So that's sad. As soon as I see aphids, I just cut it off. Um, and squish it with a vengeance to make sure that it doesn't come back. But chamomile improves actually, from what I've read, the growth and the flavor of onions. And I tried it last year and my onions seems to, seem to have done better. So I'm gonna continue to do that, interplant one row, full row of chamomile. It is an annual, <clears throat> but it does self seed. So at the end of the season, I tape a couple of blooms that are very dried up and I kind of it where I know where my onions will go next year or if not I'm just gonna dig up the little seedlings and relocate them last year I had so much re so keep that in mind if you uh, if you don't want like chamomile to invade your garden uh, so the tea blends uh, that I normally include uh, chamomile ill is in is for relaxing calming the di calming the digestive um, and all of that. Also, I found this online. I haven't tried it, but I found it and I wanted to share it. It says that it deter mosquitoes. 
So thinking about that and everyone around me knows that, you know, when I'm eight o'clock at night and I'm watering my garden, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> so I think I'm going to try growing chamomile a little bit everywhere. Like if it deters mosquitoes, I have a lot. So if you try it, let me know. Number five, uh, number four, marigolds. Marigolds is the first flower I started from seed the first year I garden. Uh, this was a suggestion from, I think, Luke from MR Gardener. It's like a powerhouse. It's a trap crop. Uh, it attracts pollinators. It's a sacrificial plant. Uh, it repels cucumber beetles. I have a lot of those. Uh, it's, they're beautiful. They're basic, but they're very beautiful, very fragrant. And I actually found out that there's multiple colors also. And there's one, it's a white pompon that I bought at the nursery last year. And I saved the seeds. And I hope that um, I'll be able to like regrow it. I hope it's not a hybrid because it's really, let's get to pompon. It's beautiful. So it is an annual, it self seeds, but it's also super easy to, uh, to save the seeds of this plant. Of this flower, sorry. Number five, sunflowers. If you haven't guessed, guessed it yet, I love sunflowers. They come, again, very, like there's like so many various different colors of sunflowers. There's red, there's classic, there's multicolors within, there's white, there's the teddy bear version, which is beautiful as well. There's short, there's dwarf, there's tall, there's cut flowers. Cut flowers means that there's no pollen inside um, this specific variety. So if you see uh, sunflowers that says cut flowers, technically it's a hybrid that has less or, or none, no pollen. Uh, this is a sacrificial plant for me. It is a beautiful plant, but it is to concentrate birds and squirrels on those. So I, I don't plant them in the hopes of getting some feed out of it for the chickens. It's literally, it's for them. I actually have fun sometimes taking my coffee on the deck outside and I just watched like five, six of them squirrels leave with like this humongous head of sunflower um, and leave with it. But I've never had a squirrel touch a tomato. So they're like, that's their purpose. It's literally, I don't want, there's so much here. So I don't want to have that trouble. You can use um, uh, for trellising peas, beans, cucumbers, small one. I use them for last year for those little apple um, there's the apple version and there's a, there's a small one, another one, little mini cucumbers. Um, and something to think of the sun, the sunflower always show you where the sun is. Like his head always moves and in certain, um, it doesn't apply to me, but I find it interesting. It actually helps in decamp, de like de to, to help, I'm losing my English, to decontaminate de soil. I find it very interesting. I also have a lot of butterflies on my sunflowers and they attract bumblebees, like those, those big ones and small ones also. And by adding all of these different flowers in my garden, I kind of find that I've created a biodiversity. So basically every flower I say today, it is attracting pollinators, companion planting. It's gonna come back, it's, you're gonna see the trend. There is also the possibility of having a variety of black seeds to use for father, for chickens. Maybe one day I'll be courageous enough to have a field completely dedicated to save the seeds and to feed my chickens. I would really love that because there's a lot of health benefits from what I've read. Number six, calendula. This was probably also one of the first flowers I grew. I think I grew marigold and calendula the first year. So the seeds were given from a friend of mine because I wanted to start doing my own salves, um, facial product because they were good for burns. They were good for, uh, when in salves and in other different skincare product products you make at home. So burns, um, well, everything around bruises, skin, uh, I really wanted to grow calendula. They self seed, they're annual, but like once you've established a patch and you just do nothing, 
you leave a couple of heads, uh, they're going to re reseed himself the next year. So all you need to do is invest the first year in some seeds. There's multiple colors. There's pink, there's orange, there's white, there's yellow. Um, I'm probably forgetting some, but I pick up the flowers, I dehydrate them, and I do, uh, I put them in oil, and I, like, I use the oil as a base of multiple stuff, but it is also to repel pests, um, borage, borage, not a lot of people know this, uh, know this plant, so there's blue borage, and I found out recently that there's white, and I had the privilege of sharing those seeds with a couple of friends in a seed swap I did, and same thing then, they did not know that it that it existed. So it has like that cucumber taste, it's edible, and you can plant it in multiple places around your garden. But same thing, it reseeds, it's an annual, and it pops like mint. So wherever you put it, uh, it's gonna take somewhat a lot of place, and then it's gonna reseed itself and create a patch of like blue or white flowers. It does good with strawberries, tomatoes. It's very attractive uh, for the pollinators and it's also good to add them near squash plants, melons and cucumbers. Uh, number eight, lavender. <clears throat> lavender is something I have a hard time growing from seeds. Uh, so I end up just buying a very big plant at the, at the store and I just cut it and propagate it. But I am starting uh, stratification to see if I can have better success. I did do two types of stratification for the lavender this year. I have one in the fridge. One is actually in my tunnel right now in like in a winter sowing, um, I would say format. And I will also try to sow them from seed. Some people I know have some success. Like I don't really have that much success when they do grow from just putting them in the soil in my grow room. They're not very bushy and I feel like they're, they're lacking. They should be better. So I'm trying stratification this year. So I grow them for beauty, for the smell, just for the fact of seeing lavender and it just moves in the garden with the winds and to see the little buzzing friends on them. It's it's relaxing. I can include them also dehydrated in my soaps, in my salves, um, in my teas, depending on the variety that I have. Um, it also repels pests, but I don't really, I don't have it in my garden for that. But it's really for DIY um, skincare, uh, like salves and all that I have it. Oh, one thing that I'm adding this year is bath salt. I have discovered with my practice of Reiki, um, having an Epsom salt bath at least once a week and the, like, the benefits of it. And I saw some people actually include rose petals, lavender flowers, dehydrate, and all those fun stuff. So uh, maybe some of those flowers, I will dehydrate them and see if I can include them in uh, bath salt, but lavender is definitely one that I add to my salts. Number nine, Cosmos. This is a new one for me. I was uh, introduced to Cosmos with the Picotee one. It's, it's really a beautiful one, same thing. When you cut it, it branches out. Um, sorry, lavender, I forgot to say, is a perennial, technically. Depending on your growing zone, you would just have to check on the pack of seed that you buy or the where you buy the plant, the variety that you have is it come back. Technically, it should come back unless it was massacred. So back to Cosmos. So Cosmos is also very easy to save the seeds. Uh, it does re -sow. It attracts, same thing, it's beautiful. It attracts a lot of pollinators. It's, e it's like really an easy flower, but I really chose this one because it seems to have attracted a lot of monarchs uh, in my garden. I do have other flowers like bee balm. It's a flower and herb. I'm not sure. Uh, I have a lot of bee balm in my garden. I specifically have a lot of herbs and flowers for the monarch, monarch butterfly because I, I'm, I love watching them in my garden. And the last one uh, is sweet Elysium. It seems to be a boring flower. 
Like you just look at it, it, it doesn't seem like it's much, but I love it. It's so fragrant, so I use it as a cover crop, like a carpet crop. Uh, and since it's so fragrant, I have a tendency of planting it near crops that are more sensible, like my squash, my melons, my cucumbers. They attract the insects, so I have fruit sets. And they repel some of the like very harsh pests like the cucumber beetles, um, the squash bugs and uh, like all of those nasty stuff. So I use them like that and they cascade. They come in a very range of uh, colors. So I normally get that I buy at the store because even though I try every year to grow them from seed um, to make to see if I can get it to work. But I just go at the store and I buy those big box of each color. There's one pink that I buy, one white, and I think the other one is purple. So I buy at least three crates of that every year. Uh, they do very well in pots and like they have like that cascade effect. Uh, they attract also ladybugs. Ladybugs are your best friend. You really want to have ladybugs in your garden. Uh, I know uh, also spiders is also something you want in your garden. I'm very scared of spiders, but I have like this love hate situation with spiders. Like I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to give you space, but like, don't do like scare me in my face type of thing, or I'm going to relocate you while I ask my husband to relocate spiders. And when I started, the spiders were small. And as I get more biodiversity involved in my garden, the bigger the spider. So I sometimes have to ask my husband a couple of times during the season to move around big spiders. And I say, I'm so sorry, but we can, you cannot stay here because like I, I end up not harvesting uh, the fruit or the vegetable that the spiders, uh, the spiders there. There you have it. That is the 10 flowers that I really enjoy having here. There's more, but those are the 10 most favorite that I have. Uh, stay tuned. I will be doing another similar video, but on herbs. I'm not sure if it's going to be a top 10, but definitely I'm going to share the uh, herbs that I grow here and why I grow them. If I can give you one last tip, if you're new on flowers, try to go with something very easy on you, like calendula, you can direct sow, nasturtium, same thing. Uh, marigold, same thing, zinnia, and cosmos. Those are like pretty easy. I prefer starting them just slightly early inside because I have the space to grow them inside. But if you don't, you can always direct sow. The reasoning behind that is I want to, I don't want to remember where I sowed seed in water because my garden's super huge and I have water bands sometimes earlier on in the season. So I want to make sure that I don't forget and I want them to bloom. And by having them inside, when I transplant them, I kind of kickstart my growing uh, season a little, a little bit earlier. Therefore, the pollinators have something to, as food when they come out. So I thank you for passing by the homestead today, and I hope you have a wonderful day. And if you're sowing seed, happy sowing.